Hello again, everybody. This is James Bartley, and you're watching and listening to the Cosmic Switchboard Show. Today, my very special guest is Ryan Phillips from the UK. And I think that Ryan's story, his personal experiences, are more representative in a way as far as describing the alien encounter phenomena. A lot of us commonly, a lot of people rather, commonly think of the alien encounter phenomena as in-your-face alien encounters, and that is the be-all and the end-all of the experience. But actually, when you really delve into it, there's a lot of phenomena, a lot of quantum holographic types of experiences, metaphysical experiences that are part and parcel with the alien encounter, alien abduction phenomena itself. Uh, they all tie in, after all, to one same world. So without any further ado, Ryan Phillips, welcome to the Cosmic Switchboard Show. Thank you very much, James. It's an absolute pleasure to be here. Thank you very much Likewise. for sharing your platform with and, me today. And thank you for, for, for you know taking the time to, to come on our show. Please uh, give an, I, uh, our listeners and viewers an idea of you know your background and how you you know you perceive this with the benefit of hindsight and also going back and reliving some of the experiences, uh, you know, your voyage of discovery, how you came to realize you were having these experiences, like many of us, yours started at an early age. So please, you've got the floor. Yeah, sure. Like you say, James, none of this is in your face. It's, it's very subtle. Um, and you've got to know, uh, and, uh, and, and, and your people like yourself and your show have really helped me, um, put the pieces of the puzzle together. Um, you know, some of your shows that you've done with Evie Logan and, and, you know, really, honestly, they've added so much value to my life and given me uh, a strategy to move forward that enables me to, you know, not make the same mistakes I've made in the past. Uh, so I want to thank you, you know, you know, for that for us right from the start. But, um, but yeah, like, like we say, it's not in your face. It's very subtle. And all my experiences are, are very subtle. And, and um, you've, you've got to know what to look for. Now, I, I want to start by saying I haven't seen an alien. <laughs> you know, I, I have no recollection of being in any craft. Um, I suspect to have an implant. A again, I don't know for sure. Um, it's just, I, I know I've got some sort of, um, uh, it, it feels like a, a pill, like a, a tablet that you take one of those pills, it feels like that embedded under the skin in my hand. Um, now, the, the, the only reason I started to suspect that they may be some sort of paranormal element to some of the things that I've been experiencing was uh, an abduction experience that I experienced when I was about 17, 18 years old. Um, now, again, again, you know, it, it wasn't in your face. It was, it was a very subtle thing. I, I came in uh, from a night out and I, I remember walking um, to the house, came up to the house through the front garden. And um, I have no memory beyond that point whatsoever um i woke up in the morning feeling quite fun you know quite okay nothing you know didn't feel too bad walked downstairs and my mum looked at me and she's like oh, i'm disgusted in you your behavior last night i was like what a, what i didn't do anything wrong i was fine nothing she goes no she goes i woke up last night she goes mother's intuition i don't know but about four in the morning i woke up I had a feeling something wasn't right. And I instantly thought of you because you'd gone out, went to check on you in your bedroom. You wasn't in bed. So instantly I've panicked. I've looked out the window and I could see you standing in the middle of the garden completely naked. So she's gone running outside to see what's wrong with me. I was, stood, I was in a trance. I wasn't like, you know, with it. I wasn't conscious. Um, and she's, she's grabbed me. She's like, get inside, get inside. And, I, you know, I still wasn't with it. I don't remember any of this. I have no recollection of it. I've ran upstairs and got in bed. And um, she said, well, what's he doing in the garden naked? That's, that's a little bit odd. A bit, a bit out of character. Um, and where's his clothes? 
So she's, you know, she's had, had a quick look around the back garden, not in the back garden, going in the front. And the, the exact point where I had my last memory, where, where just before it all goes blank, my clothes were very neatly folded in a very neat little pile on the driveway. And my watch was laid on the top. And my watch, at the time, um, you know, I was only young. I'd just started working and it was my first pay packet. But the watch was was worth quite a lot of money to me at the time. I just laid out on top in the, in the you know, right next to the street uh, where anyone could have taken it. So it's not something I would have done. I mean, I wouldn't have folded my clothes anyway, even if I took my clothes off in the bedroom. You know, they'd have got chucked on the floor as most 17-year-old teenagers would. So the whole incident struck me as being a little bit odd. Um, you know, we did joke at the time. I was abducted, you know, laugh. Oh, and, then, and then we didn't really think too much about it after that. You know, it wasn't a major event. It was just an odd, an odd thing that we couldn't quite explain. But, you know, as, as throughout my whole life, there's been a lot of unexplainable paranormal activity now. When I talk, when when you talk about paranormal normal activity in the household, you automatically think, "Oh, it's a ghost or a demon or you know something, some evil spirit." Now, I've never sensed that there's anything present that has you know sort of really evil intentions, uh, or, or I've never really sensed that there's you know a, a trapped spirit in the house or. You know, and I do believe these things can exist and do exist. I just don't believe that um, that was something that I personally was experiencing. Um, it, it's now later in life and listening to interviews, you know, a lot of people like yourself have conducted and, and you know, and, and actually gradually working out the bigger picture of life of, of what's going on on this planet. You, you can start to put pieces of the puzzle together and realise, hang on, you know, some of these events, they actually start to make sense. When you look at, you know, if there's, if there, I've heard people say, you know, you're never really alone. If you could see through the veil, it's like rush hour out there. There's, there's so many, so much going on in the background. And, and there's, I think people like me, me and you, James, and many of your listeners, who, who themselves may not be aware of the uh, activity that's going on around them or, or what they may be even subjected to in the background. Because like I say, you know, my, I was given strong clues with my abduction experience, if that's what it was. A lot of people don't, aren't fortunate enough to get those clues, you know. Uh, and and I, I honestly do believe that that wasn't a one-off with me. Um, I can think of many occasions where, you know, I've woke up in the bedroom, of, you know, give you an example, I woke up totally flipped 180 upside down in the bed one day. Okay, <laughs> you know, <laughs> I've had a really restless night, wasn't sleeping very well, all of a sudden I've like passed out with no recollection of falling asleep and then I've just woke up suddenly Upside down in the bed. Okay, a little bit odd, you know. Uh, the other day, another, another. This this was literally less than a month ago. I've got an old dog. She's fifteen years old. We've recently moved house, and in the house that we're in now, she's never been upstairs. She's never ventured upstairs. She's too old to even try and climb the stairs. Um, the other morning, woke up. Imogen, who's my stepdaughter, uh, she woke up. Why is Coco in my room? It's like, that's a bit odd. She's never, ever been upstairs. But not only was she in her room, the, the bedroom door was closed. And the dog was on the far side of the bedroom. And if, she's a teenager. If, and, you know, teenagers' bedrooms, you can't walk from one side of the room to the other. There's no clear floor space. And with her legs being the way the way, she, there's no way she'd have got over there. So how, how did the dog end up there? I don't know, a little bit odd, you know. Just little things, um, little, little clues that you could easily pass off as nothing, you know, oh, odd, you know, don't really think about it too much after that, after the occasion and before, you know, it's forgot. But because I've been giving these clues and putting pieces of the puzzle together, it's, 
I, I do see these situations as, ah, you know, I kind of know what's up in there. You know, I've got a good idea of what's up in there. Um, and, and the interference doesn't stop with strange things happening in the night. I've, I've been in a situation before where I've been sat in a room with other people. And um, as I'm sat in the room, I was in, it, was, it was in a conservatory and the, 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 the boundary between the conservatory and the house, there was some draped curtains, or net curtains, draped curtains over the doorway. So uh, uh, the person just, I sat first, with- Just a second, well, Ryan. Uh, what's yep. a conservatory? A conservatory is a glass summer, like a, um, an, uh, it's like a room that's not heated. It's like a summer house that you sit in, and it's all glazed. Um, so yeah, it's, it's, it's basically a room on a house that's, that's all glazed. Um, and the person I was sat with has, has got up and left the room to go and make a cup of tea or whatever. And as I've sat there, completely calm, nothing spooky, nothing eerie. It's like someone's, someone that's invisible that I can't see has ducked under the draped curtains and I could see where someone had lifted it up so they could pass through. And then it's gone back down, you know, and I've sat there and I've, I've watched that happen in front of my face and I've gone, oh, that's weird. I can't explain that in any way, shape or form. The only way I can explain that is that there's someone invisible in the room that I cannot see that's passed under that neck curtain and moved it out of the way. That kind of that makes sense. But it doesn't stop there. Um, I think, I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm quite fortunate now of, of, with, with the life that I've had, I've, I've made a, an effort to be more conscious and to be more self-aware, which is very important because if you're not in control, it's like when you, people that are drunk, people that are drunk, how many times have you known people that are drunk that got to a point where they blacked out, remember absolutely nothing and done some absolutely crazy stuff and woke up in the morning so paranoid and, and you know, regretful and embarrassed and, to me, that isn't that isn't um, just being drunk. That's 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 someone who's not in control of their own body, and something else steps to the forefront and goes, "Oh, I'm gonna have a bit of fun here." You know, I'm gonna do this, that, and the other. I've, yeah, I can tell you now that I've been in a pub where I've been drunk, and you know, I've been in this situation where I've lost all memory, and and and, and then there's people say, "You was, you know." dancing around the Christmas tree with no clothes on, you know, naked in the pub. So, oh, no, I didn't really, please. You know, and, and I'm not the only one that experiences that. So going back to what I was saying about being, being um, conscious and in control, there are times in my life where I've been doing something autonomously where I've not really been concentrating, not thinking, and it might be something quite delicate. And then all of a sudden, I might be moving something that's really fine and delicate. And all of a sudden, I'll jolt. The whole thing will spill everywhere and it's going on, oh, the stress. Now, was that me that jolted at that moment, in that time, at that exact moment? Or is there something observing me at that moment, thinking, oh, if I'm nudging now, or if I'm, if I take over, you know, if I access, because um, James, I mean, I don't, I mean, again, this is all speculation for me, for me. I, I can't say this for absolute truth, but I suspect that the chakra system these these portals of energy that we've got running down the spine um i, I believe that's that's a segmentation of fractalization of of us you know it's like when you look at the prism of, of light that you've got the beam of light that goes through the pyramid on the pink floyd album that comes out as a spectrum of rainbow that's a fragmentation that's like a solid it's like, it's like if that bright, solid bright light is your soul core being, it's like fragmented and divided so that we're accessible. That's what I believe the chakras are about. It's about making us accessible to these outside entities so that we can be um, manipulated and interfered with in subtle ways that we can't really notice, obviously. Um, yeah, I'm, I'm trying to think of more examples. I hear, you hear stories of people that have had car crashes, you know, people that, um, people that um, are of interest to the secret services, maybe, 
you know, they've done something. And then you hear that they've died in a, in a car crash under mysterious circumstances. Now, were they just driving down the road autonomously and then something takes over them, they have a twitch and you don't know. We don't know. We don't know what's going on. I believe that's a very strong possibility. I mean, I'm not fearful of driving or I'm, I'm, I ride a motorbike um, quite recklessly sometimes, but when I ride a motorbike fast, I'm 100% in the zone. I'm totally, I'm on that bike, I'm, I'm, I'm planted, me and that bike are one, and I'm, my concentration is unfounded. I'm not thinking about what I'm doing. It's all autonomous, and I'm 100% on it. I don't think there's anything that could interfere with me at that moment because I'm totally in the moment. But there's moments in my life where, you know, I might not be 100% focused and controlling something else could you know something can access me quite easily and um you know it causes a little bit of disruption in my life now just to interject for a second those times when you felt something like like that may have happened was it a scenario where like whether it was a sudden impulse or a random thought suggestion if you will to go out and do something or take part in some kind of activity which kind of created like the aftermath resulted in uh you know regret in uh self-recrimination uh yeah. that kind of thing where it's like, it's all, why did i do that uh, yeah. everything was i should have just stayed home and just you know oh in my younger life james i'm full of stories like that now now i'm a little bit more conscious but more self-aware i tend to be a bit more um uh, you know, I, I tend to assess situations better than I used to. And, and I don't always act on impulse, but I've had plenty of those situations in the past where, I, you know, I'll, 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 I'm saying that our, our bodies are accessible, but so is our mind. <clears throat> and, um, you know, I could be, I'm not so much now, but certainly in times in the past, I could... I could let my mind run away with me. I could be sat there and all of a sudden something will crop up from the past that has no relevance to the present moment at all. A situation that's happened in the past that's not relevant. And it, it does still happen now, but I, I consciously stop these thoughts from gaining any momentum, whereas I used to let them run away with me. So I could be perfectly happy having a perfectly good day. I could have one of these thoughts come into my head that of a... Uh, uh, you know, an old situation, something where that I might be embarrassed about, something, something that will still touch a nerve to this day. And it will send me in a spiral of downward thought. And, you know, I could then end up fed up. And, you know, uh, absolutely, I think these things are, are done deliberately to, um, to send us on these downward trajectories because we do, I believe we do have, well, this, this whole planet, is all about suppression and feeding from uh, negative vortexes of energy that, that we create. Um, and we, we generally create these, these vortexes of negative energy through manipulation. Um, and listening to some of the work that you and Evie Logan have done on, on um, uh, what's it called, the love bite, I found that fascinating, absolutely fascinating. I could look back at my life and go, wow, some of the situations I've been put in that have created this huge vortex of energy of, of you know, despair and desperation and hatred and, you know, feuds and, you know, it, wow. When I look at some of the, when I wasn't so conscious about things, when I used to let things just, you know, happen unconsciously, the wow, I was a real resource for some of these entities to, to come and have a feast. Um, yeah, I, I, I don't know about you, James, but I can, I'm now at this stage in my life, I can really see that these, these things are, are very real and relevant. Well, yes, Barbara Barthel used to refer to it as emotional energetic harvesting emotion mm. energies in motion and you know, by nature 
we are resonators, we are emitters of frequency, and it behooves these archontic beings to keep us in a low frequency bandwidth yes. through one means or another. And one thing that I've, I've come to understand, and it's not, the New Agers kind of have a, a particular take on it, but the way myself and some of my colleagues see it is, yes, we are co-creators, the problem is, as you pointed out, when we're not at that level of self-awareness and that we haven't attained that degree of self-mastery, self-control, I'm, I'm a work in progress, and, you know, by no means am I some yogi or some Buddha type that, that can just tune out all the negativity in the world and, and what have you. What happens is because these entities, many of them from our 3D perspective, rapidly verging on 4D, they're discarnate, they're interdimensional, they're non-corporeal. They need a vehicle, a medium through, through which to work through in order to affect our society, our civilization, our, our plane of existence. Enter us and through the chakras, like you pointed out, the sexual chakra, what a great way to get into people one way or the other and instill all these uh, habits, instill all, all these... Uh, you know, behaviors and, and modes of thinking. And I remember a discussion I had with, with Sarah Stanga. She's dropped off the radar the last several, you know, 10, 15 years. But she was telling me when she was in the underground facilities, she'd observed firsthand how these adepts, these warlocks in some of the underground bases, they had a way of activating particular chakras in, in a subject, mind control victim, whatever the case may be. And by activating such a particular chakra, they were able to access particular dimensions, access particular portals to travel through, send things through and allow things in. So they'd figured out a way and probably these adepts and mystics have known about this all along of utilizing certain chakras. And Kenneth Grant in his book, and he was a devotee of Crowley, talks about the ohas and the, the energy emitted from particular chakras that have been activated, how they can actually store those energies in, in metallic discs for later you know, use or whatever the case may be. So that, that's a very real uh, aspect of this, uh, the, the chakra manipulation, keeping us mm -hmm. in a state of, from their ideal perspective, in a state of permanent instability. Uh, one of the things you mentioned also about finding yourself outside naked and that, well, you don't remember that your mom had seen you outside at 4 a.m., uh, you know, Starkers, as they say in Australia, right? What happened to me a few times when I was a boy was I used to have this, uh, this one piece gray uh, pajama outfit with the attached um, socks, booties, as some people would call them, right? So from uh, the footwear all the way up to the neck, it was all one piece. And there were times, this is when I was living in Daly City, California, which is right next to San Francisco. There were times I'd wake up in the morning and there would be dirt and there were dirt clods and twigs and stickers underneath the, you know, the sock part uh, of my foot in this one piece outfit as if I'd been outside at night mm. sometime. This happened to me a few times. And there were times when I would wake up and I would find my undershirt and my underwear either inside out or backwards. Like some idiot ET didn't quite, you know, put on my clothes correctly, right? And, and that happens where, and I've had the exact same thing where I woke up oriented in an entirely different direction in bed. Mm. And there were times where I woke up in an entirely different part of the house. Like mm. I, I woke up on the sofa one time and I distinctly remembered I, I went to sleep in my bed. It's like, what am I doing to my sofa? Right. Wow. It, it didn't even make sense. So these things, when one, and I'd like your thoughts on this because for so many of us, just trying to maintain an even keel in the workaday world, in, in the day to day world, there's a tendency to just put this kind of unexplainable stuff in the back burner and just let it sit there for a while. And you know, a lot of people just forget about these things. Whereas we're more of the type where we kind of, you know, after a little bit of time, we 
reflect on what we'd see and experience felt and say, hang on a minute, there's something not quite right about this, right? So we kind of put it in a special category and then let it distill for a while and try to figure it out. And eventually at some point the coin may drop, right? And so were there occasions, uh, aside from what you described, when you know it, it helped to, to shatter the paradigms? Because a lot of us come into this world and also through this indoctrination system, we wind up paradigmatic thinkers. That's what they want us to be, stuck in these dogmas, stuck in these paradigms. And, and in my case, bit by bit, the, these odd, strange things that had happened to me, which there was not a UFO in sight, there was not an alien in sight. But if one reads Michael Talbot's book, The Holographic Universe, and the book before that, I think, uh, Beyond the Quantum, or it could have been after, he talks about these kinds of weird, anomalous things that happen to people throughout history. And then bit by bit, when these enough of these things happen to you, the paradigms begin to get shattered. The the old way of thinking begins to come um, undone, right? And, and I think that's a necessary, in many ways, prerequisite for, for better understanding later on when we're confronted with even more enormous truths and issues. So I was just wondering what your thoughts on any of that is, and, and please take it in any direction you want. Yeah, well, I, I was just thinking, actually, that... Um, uh, well... Uh, if, if I go back to, to um, sort of 2011, 2012, I was, I was expecting the time we're in now, these, these, these uncertain times where things are really starting to rattle, rattle and roll, I was expecting all this to happen at 20, in 2012 when, you know, because of the Mayan predictions, blah, blah, blah. And I really fell into that trap. I later found out, actually, that the, the, the calendar that we work by has been changed, uh, you know, by about eight or ten years. I don't, I'm not quite so sure. So... Maybe now, this period we're in now should be 2012. It'd, it'd certainly be more fitting. Uh, but anyway, around that time, I really thought things were about to rattle and roll, and I, I felt the need to um, to try and warn people about what was happening and what was coming. So I, I, I spent some time uh, writing, um, trying to, uh, you know, put something in, in together that... that that would paint a picture of what's really going on, on in the world. Now, to do something like that in, in this world, you, 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 you're making a rod for your own back. You, you, you're making yourself a target. Um, uh, so I had a, a, <laughs> I had a lot of experiences um, around that time. And I, and I had an experience that I'll probably show you, save for part two for the member's experience because it could get me into trouble if, uh, <laughs> if the wrong person was to... Is, was to hear it so you'll have to remind me in part two about it to, to to go over that experience but yeah i had a lot of things happening around me at that time but what but one of the most obvious things that, that was quite annoying and, and, and this was where the energies started becoming more and more blatant and more and more obvious in my life um if i was i, I had a computer at the time that wasn't connected to the internet and uh, i had it just for for writing because you know uh, I found that the computers I had that were connected to the internet very, got very slow, became very unreliable. You know, I had a lot of problems with those computers. So, so this was a just for writing. Didn't need anything special from it. Just, just typing. And um, while I was looking at the screen typing, it worked fine. But the second I looked down to press to look where the keys were and press the keys without looking at the screen the cursor would dart around the screen and I'd have random letters all over the screen. And it wasn't a like one-off, it was every single time I looked down. So it made writing very, very difficult. I had to look at the screen and watch the cursor for it to stay put so I could write something that made sense. And from that, you know... <sighs> I, I was also, you know, I had a little bit of gang stalking going on at the time and stuff as well. Because um, they, they, they want to stop the, you, anyone that that's, that's wants to bring this information to the fore, I do believe they try and stop them before they even get, get to the point where they could do anything credible. Um, so, yeah, from that point forwards, um, some of these energies started getting more and more obvious. I was, I was getting more and more taunted as well. To the point where um, 
I would literally see things physically move around me, you know. I was sat in, sat in the living room one night and I had a box of vinyl records and I was just sat there and, and this box of vinyl records just suddenly toppled over out of nowhere. No vibration, no movement, just fell over. I was like, found that quite exciting. I was like, okay, what else is going to happen? Looking there, waiting for something else to happen, but it didn't. But then um, I had some real, real problems sleeping at night. I've got a lot of health issues, which again, you know, autoimmune diseases and things, that, are these things that are uh, naturally occurring or, or could these possibly be activated in people that have implants? Possible. Activated in people that have, uh, you know, gone through all the correct medical procedures when they were children, you know, certain um, injections that we might have had as, as children possible I don't know but um got a lot of autoimmune problems and during this time of, of, of not sleeping I was taunted a lot at night and it started off with involuntary movements you know I'd just be dozing and all of a sudden I'd twitching and jerking and that was annoying that went on for a while then it moved on to like I was I was just dozing and I, at the moment I was renovating my bedroom um, we had no carpet and um, so I had a bedside table that was sat on floorboards and I was laying face in the bedside table and just as I was dozing, it slid across the floor. Oh, jolted me awake. How annoying. And now I'm awake and startled and wondering what that was. And, oh, you know, try and get back to sleep, you know. And then it, it got progressively worse. Um, there was one day I was sat, leaning on the edge of the bed with my head in my arms, you know, uh, just, I'd, I'd be up and down. Because if you sit up for a while and then lay back down, you feel a bit, little bit refreshed, stand a better chance of sleeping. So I was, I was sat up in bed, just sitting there, and then all of a sudden something pushed me clean over, and, like violently and hard. I was bruised and, and grazed from the experience as well. What the hell? I was angry. I was, you, you know, you coward hiding in the shadows, attacking me, you know, you know, you absolute coward. Um, whether I should be taunting these things or not, I don't know. I'm not fearful of it anymore. This is, you know, this is, these things are too, no, have been too normalized for me now to be paranormal or, or to be fearful of it. Um, and then there was another occasion where I, I was actually asleep and I, and I was awakened physically sliding across the bed uh I, I had no there was nothing pushing me i could feel no nothing in like someone's hand in the middle of the back pushing i had none of that i was just sliding across the bed and i tried to grip onto the bed to stop myself but i could see myself getting closer to the edge and then just got to the edge dropped off bang on the floor I was like, oh <laughs> you know how annoying how frustrating um so so these energies have, have been getting a little more um, obvious. They've not been concealing themselves. It's like, he knows, they know I know what's going on, so there's no point hiding anymore. You know, there's no point um, trying to be discreet. We'll just give him what we've got, you know? And, and there was another occasion when, I, um, again, this was recent. This is all recent, this, this stuff now. Um, there was a time... I, I went away with my friends and this is this is right in the middle of when I'm, you know, being pushed off the bed and stuff. Um, I, I went away with my friends and we stayed on a boat. Now, we was all inside the boat and then one of my friends went up on the top to have his birthday cigar and one by one, the other people inside the boat went up there and joined him. And just as the last person left my vicinity and, and, and as they went out the back door to to climb up on the roof. My bedroom door, which was at the front of the boat, just violently went bang and burst open and, you know, startled. And I was like, whoa, look, my bedroom door. Okay, I'll take that as a, as a sign, as a signal that you're telling me that even though I'm away from home, you're here with me now. You know, it, it, uh, is, this, is this about fear now? 
is this about installing things? No, it's not, because I'm not fearful of it. Of it. What is this about now? It's, it's, it's purely antagonistic. Purely antagonistic. Yeah. And it, I don't know if this is anything... That, I don't know if you yourself have... I, I've have, had have some anything. things... Some people I know have gone through much worse experiences than I have as far as uh, these kinds of supernatural intrusions, right? And it, it's... Sometimes it's almost pointless trying to make a determination. Okay, is this ET related? Is it interdimensional? Is it supernatural? Is it like a haunting? It's you know something is going on, and from a quantum holographic perspective, it's all possible. So I'm not going to spin my wheels to try to figure out what exactly is going on because that would be you know unproductive at least for for a time. Yeah. But like I was saying, gradually what happens is sometimes it can be quite abrupt. One's worldview, one's perspective radically changes. So after a while, you know, getting back to the normalization aspect you were just describing, we start to take some of these things almost in stride. And, and I, I don't know if that's a good thing or it's a bad thing, right? Uh, I, I know that it's probably a good thing that we don't have the like real negative downer effects that we may have had earlier. Like oh, I had a horrible experience last night and we just fret and, you know, despair over it for days and, and, and weeks. Whereas our recovery time, if you will, is more rapid. I mean, we can go through a, even a relatively crappy experience. And then within a day or two, we're, we're pretty much back to normal. So, I guess that's a good thing. It shows that we're, we're adapting, if you will, that we've, uh, you know, our comfort zone, uh, rather our, our security posture has been increased to the point where a lot of these things don't affect us the way they, they may have. I went through a pretty skittish phase too, where, you know, I just hear an abrupt sound or a knock or a pounding on the window or something. It could just be a friend who wants to hang out, right? And, you know, I'd just be jolted, <laughs> you know, from, you know, the surprise and the shock. Uh, now, what I've come to understand, and I like your thoughts on this too, is this is one level of consciousness, consciousness that we're at now where we're talking, interacting with each other. When we go to sleep and we drift off into the dream world, that's a whole nother environment, a whole nother reality entirely, where once again, because of the astral uh, interdimensional aspects, the laws of physics and what have you that we've come to understand as normal here simply do not apply. Now, in what, if any, dreams uh, do you remember having that may have a bearing on what we've been discussing. Have you had dreams about UFOs, aliens, or, or being in a haunted house, or, or are there recurring themes or patterns or locales in some of your in dreams all honesty, where, you, where you seem to you know, go back to once in a while? Yeah, in all honesty, no, I don't, I don't, I don't tend to remember dreams. Um, that doesn't necessarily mean they're not occurring. I just, I just don't necessarily remember them, but I have had, um, some odd things happened to me at the point of where I've been sort of going to sleep. I've had, I've had a couple of out-of-body experiences, actually. Um, and and, and I, I, again, you know, this is all speculation because you hear that what I've heard is that we're not always physically abducted. Sometimes they'll just abduct our astral body. Now, I don't know about all this stuff, really. A, a lot of this is is quite airy fairy for me. I'm I'm more of a nuts and bolts kind of guy. But however, that doesn't necessarily mean to say that there isn't something, some relevance to all of it. It's just you know. So so I'll, I'll, I'll you know I'll, I'll gloss over this without being too specific because it's not really my field. But um, yeah, I do believe the 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 astral body. I don't know what the astral body is. I don't know what the astral plane is. I've, I've experienced it because I've, I've had an out-of-body experience. And, then, and it's always been when I've been lying in bed. Um, the first time it happened, um, I, just, I was just laying in bed. I had a, this unbelievable tingling sensation just wash right over me. It was almost like spine tingling and starting, starting my feet up and down. It washed, waved over me and then pop, I was out. 
but it wasn't, I, I was kind of, I was awake and experiencing this, but it was almost like a dreamscape at the same time. It's a very, very hard thing to explain, but I remember seeing myself laying in bed and I was, and I went, I moved around the house. I wasn't walking, I moved around the house and I was naturally, and I, and I actually started drifting towards the window and going up towards, and I went, no, 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 no. And I, I resisted that and I was like, no, no, I'm not going out there. I'm, I was, I was fearful of that. So I was, that didn't actually happen. So I stayed put where I was. Now, was that an abduction where was, there was taking me up to somewhere and, and I resisted and I popped out and I'm in the actual plane? Because this isn't something I can do on my own will and my own, you know, I, I can't uh, astro travel the astral plane or anything. Um, so, and, and then I, I remember going into the, onto the, into the landing Oddly enough, my landing window was a little bit different to what it is in real life. I don't know what the significance of that is. I don't, I don't really understand. Uh, I went, it was like just a bit of an exploration for me. And I, I went and laid in the bath, <laughs> which was weird. And I was like, and then that started feeling like I, I could uh, drift off again, like out of conscious, out of this being consciously aware of where I am. And I was like, no, no, get back in bed, get back in bed. And then I forgot, almost forgot that I wasn't my, in my physical body. And then as I got back into the bedroom, I could see myself laying in bed again. And then I sort of settled back in and I was like, oh. And I, it was like, the this, this settling in was almost like a, I could feel myself coming back in. And, and then it was like, I could feel, yeah, I'm in now. And then it was, and then I went back off to sleep. So it was weird, unusual experience. I can't, you know, again, not something I could quite explain, but it, was, it happened to me again, um, years apart. Um, at this, this time, um, it, it was during my period of really, really poor sleep. And I, 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 you know, I was laying in bed and looking at the clock and it's like three o'clock and then just turned four o'clock. I was like, oh, at least I'm past the witching hour now because, you know, between three and four is, you know, quite repute as a reputation for being the most active period in the night. I've missed, I've missed the, uh, you know, the witching hour should be all right now. And then I, just as soon as I had that thought, I had that exact same sensation washing all over me again. From the, and I was like, whoa, I know what's happening here. I was like, no, 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 stop, stop, stop. And I, I, rather than letting myself be pulled out of my body. I was resistant and I stopped it from happening. And I woke myself up and I was like, you know, and I start, physically stopped it from happening that time. So that could, that my interpretation of what happened there, I, I do believe that was um, um, an astral abduction, which, you know, sounds airy fairy, I know. Um, I I just, just to interject done. for a second, I, I had something similar happen when I was in San Diego. I was I was laying in bed at night trying to drift off, and I, I felt myself lifting off the bed. Now, mm. at the time, I didn't know if I was in my body. I didn't know if it was astral. All I know is I had the sensation of being levitated off my bed. So I started screaming quite naturally, right? Oh, yes. Ah, and, but I didn't hear my voice. So I go, yeah, okay. so about that as well. Yeah. Yeah. So I don't hear my voice. Yeah. So I'm either kind of like muted or this yeah. is an astral thing. Right. Yeah. So yeah. 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 And another occasion, I had a dream. It was a, a dream experience. And I don't know if it was, I dreamt about a previously unremembered or forgotten experience or experience that was wiped from my conscious memory or it was just some kind of dreamscape scenario that some ET or something decided to create, you know, for, my, for me in my sleep state. But in my dream, I was driving along uh, in a car that, that I, I, I had at the time. Yeah. And in the dream, suddenly the car is lifted off the road. And once again, I start screaming, right? What else am I going to do? And, uh, and I was so terrified, it caused me to just wake up with a start in bed. And, and it made me wonder, like, what was that all about? Was it a previously unremembered abduction I went through? Or just they're just messing with me? Or 
Yeah, so I, I can relate to the the astral dreamscape and astral abduction aspect of it. Uh, and I know that I've had astral abductions because I've felt them at times just almost violently ripping my consciousness, for lack of a better term, right out of my physical body, sometimes forcibly out of my head. Sometimes I could feel my soul, call it what one will, being just forcefully like ejected out of my chest cavity and other times i could feel my consciousness being pulled out from uh you know the soles of my feet so so it varied and also you talked about in bed and feeling sensations being moved and slid around i've had experiences where i, I was going through a skittish phase and for me it tends to these kinds of experiences tend to run in cycles right and nothing happens for a while and then whammo i go through a spate of these experiences and I was in one of those cycle periods and I left the lights on because I was kind of skittish again. And I was laying there with my eyes closed and I had a white bed sheet over me and I could feel the white bed sheet literally being pulled towards the foot of the bed. And, I, and I'm immobile. I can't move or do anything about it. Mm -hmm. So I just start, I don't know what I did. I was calling out you know, in my mind, praying or something, but it stopped. But I distinctly remember that this bed sheet was being pulled down towards the foot of the bed. So again, it was an example of, yes, yeah, from a quantum entanglement, quantum observation point of view, something is watching, something is observing, something is impacting me in some way. Just like they say in quantum physics, if you look at something that you're, you're having some effect on even a relatively inanimate object, so-called simply by mm -hmm. focusing one's attention on it. Well, something clearly was focusing his, focusing his attention on me, and obviously these things have focused their attention on you as well at times. Sorry. I have wondered, James, as well, whether whether this is all extraterrestrial or, or whether I actually suspect there are some people in my life that, that were in my life, sorry, when I was less conscious, um, that were actively part of, um, I was, I was made a victim uh, by, by, by certain people that I know now, you know, high ranking Freemasons that, you know, practice, I'm assuming, sorry, that they practice, you know, the dark arts. Now I've, I've spent people with evil intent have fascinated me for a, for a while and, and I've, I've done a lot of research into their intentions and, you know, um, uh, you know, I've, I've followed certain people on YouTube and, you know, that's led me to other people and other, you know, and, and, and I've, I've learned a lot about what makes them tick, why they do what they do, why, um, and how, um, and why they feed emotionally from other people like they call themselves um uh, it's a not emo some sort of vampire i can't remember what the word is now emotional vampire no i don't know energetic vampire energetic vampire that's the one they vampire people not through sucking their blood but through you know energy and they they consciously oh yeah that, that, that's no joke because energy. you spend even a minimal amount of time from these people they're, they're like sucking the life essence out of you you're just yeah. drained and exhausted and which leaves so you what, vulnerable for further manipulation yeah now the one guy that i followed um he he one of his blogs or vlogs whatever you, what you call it he was claiming that he was still taunting his ex-wife and he used to visit her out in the astral plane at night and she used to see him in her bedroom at night. She knew it was him. And she knew, because she knew what he was into as well. And she knew he, he dabbled in that stuff. So she knew, she knew it was him. But I, I've also wondered whether there could be an element of that in my life, whether it is necessarily, um, you know, an extraterrestrial being or whether it is some, someone on the earth plane that is practicing the dark arts that have access to uh, uh, techniques and things that, that, that we, you know, very have very little understanding of uh, that may come in into into the access my physical uh, location and, and start manipulating and, and being vindictive towards me in the night. It's possible, 
You know, I'm open to everything. I, I don't know for, for certain exactly what's going on. Apart from I do know that it's it's all about, like we've said, energetic vampirism, whether it's on a, an extraterrestrial level or, or whether it's, you know, on a, on a physical level, real tangible people in our lives that are, uh, you know, like to see us as victims. And, and, and now I'm not... I'm not a victim by these people anymore. So that's maybe why they've moved on to doing, you know, to a new strategy and different techniques. Maybe this is just something I'm considering. I don't know for sure. The, what happens sometimes, and uh, certainly this is the case with archontic entities of various stripes, where if they can't get the requisite feed off somebody because they just don't give into the fear, right? Or they may even be defiant and have a, don't give a toss attitude and they don't get the feed and reaction out of them it seems to me they sometimes move on to easier prey move on to other game yeah and one thing about these adepts warlocks uh black magicians if you will i think that some of them are definitely hybridized reptilian draco hybrid mantid hybrid of one one form or another so they have an innate metaphysical uh aspect to them yes. and definitely some of them are astral operators some of them are really into astral rape uh sexually violating people uh, astrally and then yes. gang stalking them and then trolling them afterwards like ha 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 you know you know that was me but you can't prove it was me because if you took you know, if you try to you know go to the authorities they'll just think you're a nut and lock you up for saying that I'm visiting you, you know, astrally doing all these things to you. So they, they gaslight them on, on top of that. And there are people in the UFO field, people in the truth community, so-called, that do this. These, these are, there are people that are hardcore evil. They profess to be publicly on their YouTube channels or in their podcasts to be truthers and, you know, freedom fighters, but, but they're anything but. And it's possible that, somehow you wound up on the radar. Now, was this, did this come on the heels of, of you doing your writing and putting out certain information? Uh, was it after that time frame or actually, during? No, it was after, yeah. Um, I actually went through uh, quite a lot uh, at the time I was doing the writing and stuff. And it got me to the point where I was quite fearful to continue, you know, putting things out there. It got to the point where, uh, you know, I, I stood back for a while, you know, just, just, just because, you know, I was scared of where it could possibly lead. Uh, Cause like I say, I did have, there's a story I want to come into but in part two, um, that really shook me big time and made me think, actually, I'm really dabbling with, <laughs> you know, some pretty powerful forces here. Um, so I, I, I took a step back for, for a long time. It's only, it's only been, you know, now I've, I've sort of started being outspoken again, but I feel that I'm in a better position now. I'm, I'm more consciously aware. I'm making it harder for them to access me. I'm making it harder for them to manipulate me as I'm becoming more self-aware and more conscious. And I think it's also very important to note, James, that, um, you know, when I was, um, when I was in the thick of, uh, of allowing these energies to run rampant in my life and things were falling apart for me and I was in despair, things were, Life was difficult, man. I've had a tough life. And I know there's a lot of people out there who can relate to what I'm saying because there's a lot of us here experiencing this, James. It's not, I'm not unique here by any means or any stretch. Yeah, my challenges are quite extreme because I've needed extreme challenge in my life in order to develop and grow. It's been a, it's been a catalyst. It's been something that I can actually say has been quite beneficial in my life. Uh, and I'm actually really, in a, in a strange way, quite grateful for all this challenge, if that makes sense. Um, but going back to where I was in my life when, when before I was, when, when I was manipulable, and I, I still am manipulable. I'm not, 
I'm not trying to claim that I made it or, you know, I'm, my process is over. It's, it's not by any stretch. I'm still learning. I'm still growing and I've still got challenges. I've still got big challenges actually in my life. Um, but on the whole, as I've become more self-aware and more conscious because I'm needed to be, my life has improved greatly, uh, especially on a day-to-day -day basis. Um, and, and we can call it the law of attraction, if you like. I don't like that term because I think the secret, the film, the, the movie, the secret was quite deceptive in that it said, it stated that it's your thoughts that manifest the world and the reality around you. And I don't believe it is your thoughts. I believe it's your belief systems and your emotional well-being. That your inner world, your outer world, rather, is a reflection of your inner world, a direct reflection. And I've I've had this proven to me so many times. Um, and it's true. Um so by being more self-aware and, and more conscious, we are able to use our creative energies rather than to use our creative energies to feed these entities through fear and anger and despair and all these negative emotions. We can actually start harnessing our energy in a more creative way to empower ourselves and to improve our lifestyle and our day-to-day -day living and um i've seen this in my own life where i'm coming from i'm like i say i'm not i've still got big challenges in my life but from where i've come from from the dark places and that i've come from i've made tremendous ground over the last the course of the last 10 years or so um maybe 15 years i've, I've really come a long way in myself and it's it's been a difficult process. It's not been easy. It's been challenging. And I know that in order to progress any further now, it's going to take more challenge. It's going to take more. And I know it's that, and I'm prepared for it. And there are times where I can really start to feel that something's coming into my life that's going to challenge me greatly. And, in one sense, I'm like, oh, no, here we go. This is going to be difficult. I don't want to do this. But in another sense, I'm like, come on, you need this. This is going to be transformative in some way. Um, this is going to benefit you in some way, shape or form. It has to because, because of how things have been in my past. My darkest times, James, my darkest days turned out to be my most enlightening as well. Um, and I'm not alone in this experience. I know there's other people out there who have, who find these challenges transformative and, 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 and this isn't just on a, on a personal level. I think this is, this is on a, on a planetary scale as well on a, on a, the, the human race itself is going to be challenged big time. What we, what we are on the precipice of, and it's already started. The, the, the chess pieces have moved it. They're already in position. Things are in, in flow. Um, we are heading towards big challenges, big, big challenges as a, as a collective. But these challenges for people like us, James, especially for people like us, they're going to be very transformative. Our lives, as we know and understand them now, are going to be very different in the very near future. You know, we can already see they've got plans that for the um, the whole system itself needs to change. It has to change because technology has got to a point now where the human labor force is being made redundant. Now, at the moment, the whole system uses the human labor force as a resource. 
we live in a, in a debt-based economy where the debt is repaid through human labor. That is the very foundation for the system that we're, we're in at the moment. Now, that's going to change. It has to change because the technology is advancing to the point now where it has to change. And, it, you know, things in the future will be, uh, it won't be a debt-based economy. It won't be labor-based. It'll be, I believe, conformity-based. If you conform to the system, you will be rewarded by this. That still stands now. That's how the system operates now. People who support and reward the system are rewarded by the system. People who stand against the system usually are, you know, people who aren't very successful in, in you know, monetary terms or, or, you know, depending on how you look at success in life. So, yeah, going back to, uh, to what I'm trying to say, we need to start using our creative energies more consciously, uh, both on an individual, personal level, and as a as a collective, as a as a, 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 a as as we see things progress, we can already see a huge division in society. That is is very very obvious. Um, there are certain terms I can't use, but this recent pandemic, um, you've got two portions of people, those that have complied with um, what, the, what was being pretty much forced upon the population and those who were, who were resistant. There's, there's two very distinct camps of people now. Um, and, and ultimately, that divide is is going to widen. It's going to it's going to get become greater. And for people like me and you, James, our lives are going to be challenging. But at the same time, we're going to move in a direction which is more genuine, which is we're more going to be more true to ourselves, more true to our, our nature. And um, ultimately, it's it's going to be more rewarding. And, the, and there's one thing, James, that really, honestly. When I stand back and I look at how severely and how much energy is being used into suppress the human race as a collective and in our personal, on our own personal lives, you know, down to our personal relationships, we're getting interference on every level, down to our, our own personal thoughts. It's the food we eat, the air we breathe. It's... There is no stern, stone left unturned. They are coming at us from every possible conceivable angle. And when I look, stand back and look at how heavy this suppression is, I get so excited about thinking about how life can be without this suppression. And that's exactly what's happening as this system is revealing itself, the intentions of this dark cabal, as we start to see more and more what its intentions are, what's happening and what it's doing, and we become more consciously aware, we are moving away from all of that. And ultimately, this is heading in one direction, and this, the, the, where this will end up is that this place, there is an, an awakening occurring amongst the human population we are changing we are evolving we are waking up we are becoming more true to our, na our true nature and as this happens they're going to find this this place more and more uncomfortable and it's going to come to a point where they're going to be so uncomfortable they're not going to want to reside here on this planet anymore and i personally i can only see this going in one way i can see them trying to it ultimately, at the end of all of this, they're going to have to leave this planet and they're going to try and take as many people as they can with them um, to further their agenda elsewhere with, with the human race. And there is something about the human race that's very unique. Uh, and this isn't my song to sing, um, but there's something about the human race 
we are a very unique and a very powerful species. We just don't know the power that we hold. They do. They understand what's here to be harnessed, and they are harnessing that energy. They've, they've worked very hard for a very long time to harness this energy that we, on an individual level and, a, and on a collective level, um, they've manipulated our energy to harvest our energy for a very long time. And when we start to take our creative processes back into our own hands, wow, I can only imagine where this is leading. And I get so excited. Sometimes I get, you know, I really get buzzing about where this is leading. And there was an analogy that I heard that, that really shook a chord with me. And I, I don't listen to channelings anymore, but, it, but for this particular channeler, it, it was Bashar. Um, I used to listen to him many, many years ago. Uh, I listened to him a lot because there was a lot of wisdom come through that channel. And generally speaking, channels don't share wisdom like, like that. But um, he actually stated that the further and um, the deeper we are pulled back into the darkness, when we're finally released, the faster and further we will shoot into the light. It's like an elastic band, you know, you pull it back, the tension that, that we're under at the moment, as that's released, we're gonna fly on a trajectory of, you know, a positive trajectory that we can't even imagine from this perspective. And this is, this is what I believe is coming in, in within our lifetime. Um, well, I, I hope. <laughs> I hope. I mean, I, like I say, James, I'm still in. Um, I'm still in a very precarious position. My health isn't great. Um, I've been on dialysis now for eleven years, and and I'm sitting here talking about the system collapsing, and now I, my life depends on the, that system at the moment. So I'm in a very precarious position, and I I could quite easily sit here, very fearful about what the future holds. And, and don't get me wrong, James, I'm human. And I have sat and fret about it at times. What am I going to do when the system collapses? Because I can see it collapsing. It has to. It has to collapse. There's no, other, there's no other way. What am I going to do? How am I going to survive? You know? But at the end of the day, if I, if I spend my energy focusing on the negatives, I'm going to manifest those negatives. So I try and, you know, I, I, I try and focus on my excitement of what will be, regardless of the ifs and buts, because life has a very strange way of working itself out. I, I, I nearly went bankrupt 11 years ago. When I first became ill, I, was, I nearly went bankrupt. I lost everything. And um, without even generating a source of income, really. I, I rely on, on government handouts, benefits at the moment because, because of my health and the way things are. Um, I've managed to create a life for myself that is... I, I've, I've not gone without anything. I've not gone without holidays. I've not gone without... Not, I've not missed out on anything. I still ride a motorbike. You know, I don't let things hold me back in any way shape or form and I've even even like I'm, my life is in a position now that I, I could never have imagined years ago um you know just as the cities started to become you know 5g and you know more and more of a challenging place to be I, I was I found myself in a position where I was able to move away from that I'm now I'm now living in the countryside in a house with a bit of land and I've got a greenhouse, a big greenhouse, and I've got vegetables in the ground growing. And it, I never could have imagined this life for myself 10, 11 years ago from where I was nearly bankrupt. And, and I've not done anything. I've not actively tried to change my life. I've just remained in a positive mindset. I've not let things grind me down and, and get on top of me at all. And despite my health conditions, you know, I've watched people um, 
at dialysis. <clears throat> I watch people deteriorate very quickly over a short period of time. And I've seen people die. A lot of people die, uh, come and go in, 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 you know, on dialysis because they give up. Because they're the victim of their circumstances. And I've refused to be a victim of circumstance. Like I've gone through the majority of this interview now, I tell you at this point now, I've, I've even decided to tell you that I'm on dialysis because as far as I'm concerned, that's just a little bit of who I am. Whereas these people who really suffer, it's all about who they are. It's the first thing they'll say to someone when they meet them, oh, I'm on dialysis, I'm a victim, I struggle, I'm this, I'm that, life's difficult, blah, blah. That's not me. People meet, I meet people and they don't get to know that I'm on dialysis. It's not something I'll openly declare because it's not me. It's not who I am. And, it it, and it I'm doesn't certain... define you. That, that's that's exactly. an important aspect of it. You know, they say that sorrow is a pathway to the soul. When we get to a state where we feel you know, forlorn, forgotten, uh, kicked to the curb, if you will, uh, from a divine perspective. Yeah, it, it's a time for soul searching and, and introspection. And we can either, you know, just really become depressed about the whole thing or pick ourselves up by the bootstraps and, and carry on. And that's, that's what you've done. And, and, and thank you yeah. for sharing that. And uh, got a lot more to go through in, in the second segment. Uh, if you feel so inclined, uh, could you let the viewing audience and listening audience know how, how they could reach you? Uh, if, uh, of course. Okay. Yeah, I mean, like I say, James, I, I, I tried to um, put myself out there in the past, but then I, I did do a backtrack and sort of suppress myself for a while. And so I've not actually got a website, a YouTube page. I'm not, I've not got any of that. I've got, I've got a Facebook page, which, you know, I'm not big on Facebook, if I'm honest. Um, they can find me on Facebook, Ryan Phillips, um, or alternatively, if someone wanted to contact me by email, again, I'm not, I'm not brilliant with, <laughs> with keeping on top of, um, you know, emails and things, but, but now I know I've put it out there, I will make more of an effort to, to make sure I check these things. But my email address is, uh, it's, it's Ryan is free. That's all one word. So that's R Y A N I S F R E E at ymail.com. So yeah, if anyone wanted to, to get hold of me for, for any reason whatsoever, then, then please feel free. So yeah, if people want to join us in part two, that'd be great. Um, obviously, that's that's for your members only, isn't it, James? Now, yeah, I, I, I've I've been a member and a subscriber to your channel for for a number of years. Actually, it's only it's only very recently I had to stop the subscription because um, I've had some financial things going on. Only temporary, temporary. You know, they'll soon iron themselves out, and I and I, I'd like to to be a member again, but I wasn't even really if, if i'm honest with you james i didn't always listen to every episode you put out i very really rarely listened to a part two because i generally put them on at bedtime and you know sort of fall asleep uh, before they got to the end of the podcast normally but um my point is the, the only reason i was a paid member is because you did actually add value to my life thank you um now, there's, everyone out there has, has probably got a Netflix subscription that's not adding any value to their life. It's just mindless entertainment. And then there's people like you who are only asking for a cup of coffee a month uh, in, in terms of fees. To, and, and you are, you know, really adding value into people's lives with the work that you're doing. So I'd really encourage people to consider being a member, not necessarily because you want to listen to part two, but because... Uh, to support people like yourself, James, that are adding value into people's lives. And I personally appreciate, you know, the work that you are doing. I think you're doing a tremendous job. And I want to congratulate you on building the platform that you have. So well done and thank uh, you. Th thank you, Ryan. Uh, I really appreciate that. And 
we've expanded our operation because we're down to our last strike on YouTube. So we've we've set up uh, platforms on Rumble and Odyssey and other uh, other platforms just in case YouTube goes by the way of the dodo at some point. Uh, well, we've reached the end of the first segment. And to our dear listeners out there, if you like what we do, if you believe what we do, please go to the cosmic switchboard.com, sign up, become a member, and we'll see you at the top of the, the member segment. <laughs> 